Today, we're gonna jump into a bit of a first impressions and demo of Zoho POS, formerly called Zakia. This is Zoho's point of sale system that they've rebranded to just called POS. So we're gonna take a look at kind of the announcement page, then we're gonna jump into the application itself, and I'll show you some of the key features that differentiate it from just using something like Zoho Books and Inventory. So with that, let's jump on in here to their main landing page. This is now rolling out. It's kind of quietly rolled out for the US market here. I was able to add it to one of our demo accounts. Your mileage may vary. Sometimes we get into early access a little bit before the general public, but it does seem like this is actually making the push into the Western markets. Essentially, this is a POS tool. You're gonna be able to run it inside of a browser for all of your kind of backend management, and then also deploy it via, you know, mobile devices or primarily like iPads, tablets type setups. Essentially, the idea is you're going to tie this into Zoho Books and Inventory for all of your items, product images, prices, stock on hand. Then you're going to be able to use that application on the fly to essentially like scan and run your in-store sales operations. Also going to tie into e-commerce as well. I'd assume a lot of this is gonna be shared with Zoho Commerce. So take a look at that for the e-commerce side if that is of interest. Really core features here are a lot. If you look at this little bar, it's almost a little excessive, but it's gonna tie into your inventory, manage the billing, right? So you'll be connecting like a card swipe, right? To be able to run those credit cards in store. It actually has a whole cash tracking functionality as well for like opening and closing a register, which I will show inside of the application. Going to connect to credit card processors. A lot of this, as you'd expect, are just going to be those ones supported via Zoho Books, right? So things like Stripe, Square, Authorize.net, Zoho Payments, right? We actually uh, just got a demo of Zoho Payments the other day, and it's quite good, <laughs> I have to say. So you'll be able to track those through all the customer details flowing in, all the vendor details. Again, a lot of this coming from the books and inventory syncs, all the hardware as well. So you will actually be able to connect to the cash drawer. It's kind of the difference here with POS versus something like books and inventory is that it very much has to connect to the real world, right? So you're going to need a printer, potentially a scale, depending on what you're selling, cash drawer and barcode scanner, all of which are just going to connect right in through that mobile application, right? So their goal here is to really make like a full in-store POS. They've got some other sections here to show analytics, integrations, right? As you'd expect, most of those, like I keep mentioning, are going to leverage what already exists inside of Zoho Books and Inventory. Let's actually jump into POS itself. Now, before we move on to the demo, I do have to ask if you're finding the video useful so far, be sure to like and subscribe down below. That's a totally free way to help us out. If this sparks any questions, feedback, or video requests, leave those down in the comment section and head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help with your Zoho installation. Let's get back to it. To try accessing this, it'll basically be pos.zoho.com, or you can go to this landing page here and click on access POS if you want to give it a try. Let me know if you're in the US, please do try that and leave me a comment on if it enables for you. I haven't really seen anything like announcing this for like the US or Europe, but here I am in it in that data center. So I'm really curious to see if this is kind of just a stealth rollout or what. So here, looking at this, again, you're going to have that primary dashboard. This is like, what are we selling? What do we need to ship out? Anything that's low stock. Inventory section, very similar to what you'll see inside of Zoho Books and Zoho Inventory, right? We've got an item and we've got stock on hand for it, both accounting and physical. Now, what is a little bit different is you'll see this POS preference section for each of your items. Right. So, you know, normal Zoho books, you basically have everything except for this. What these basically look at is, is there a discount maximum? Do we want to fetch some type of quantity from a weighing scale? So like, you know, if I'm selling a shirt, no, I don't need that. If I'm selling apples, yeah, I might need that because I might be selling those by weight. So in here, I can come in and configure it and basically set up all of those detailed settings that only would really be relevant inside of the POS. Now, some of these, I would say like something like restrict the selling price, I would turn that on and then allow whatever amount of discount you want on it just to make sure the stuff isn't getting, you know, discounted without it showing up as a discount. And then if you need to enter item quantity before adding into a cart, again, I would generally have this turned on for most items just because it's a good check, right? To make sure that we're adding the appropriate quantities. And then again, weighing only really if you need it. The rest of these sections, 
just exactly like Zoho Books and Inventory, right? Composite items, item categories, price list adjustments, and other. Now, item categories is one thing that is a little bit different. So within a particular store, you can have multiple different categories of items. Basically, the idea here is just that they will show up differently in the mobile application, right? So if you were doing something like selling, I don't know, clothes, we could have that as a category, and then something else as like shoes as a category, right? In case you have a scenario where you are kind of like looking through the POS to find a certain item to ring it in. I've actually, <laughs> back in college, I worked in lots of different retail and sales environments, and I have worked in some where it's all barcode scanner. I worked in another where we were selling e-bikes. We had about 15 products, right? So we would just have an iPad, make a selection. It was like bikes, accessories, right? So very similar to what you'd have in something like Square. And then I can come in and actually associate these products to those particular categories. So I can just come in here and say, hey, that is for, you know, an assembled product or that is for our uh, clothes and that's for our shoes. The rest of these, right? Customers, orders, invoices, payments received, all this good stuff. Very, very similar. So I'm going to close this window. It's just doing a little pop up saying, hey, go get the mobile app for App Store and iOS. Orders here are sales orders in any other application. Those are just going to be rung in via that mobile application. The rest of these, very similar. But down here, you do have a couple new ones for sessions and conflicts. So what is a session? A session is essentially a day or a shift right? So this is a starting cash balance, a series of transactions and payments, and then an ending cash balance. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is something like a credit card transaction. You don't really need that to affect your cash balance on the register, right? Because that's just going directly through your normal credit card processing. But anything that's paid via cash, we do want to make sure that that's actually going into one of these sessions. So just a little bit different than the book side. Basically, what you're going to say is like, hey, I do want to turn on sessions. I may want to send an email automatically at the end of every session. Like, hey, here's the sales for the day. Here's you started with a thousand bucks. You ended with three thousand bucks. Good day of sales, right? You can have cash denominations. Basically, if you want to have certain buckets of money that you use, eh, generally not something we use too heavily. And then you could say, hey, how much cash do we have just at the beginning of a normal session? This can be overruled as we actually go in and start a session, but it is like you're generally going to have some normal amount, right? Like we're going to leave a thousand bucks in there and then whatever the profit is going to go into the safe. And then once a week, we're going to come pick up the safe and bring it where it needs to go. So there is normally a default. You could always say, hey, we don't have a default. We just keep it all in the cash register and roll into the next day. I don't recommend that. Um, normally you're going to have some type of no like starting point for the cash that we're going to have in a day. So now if we go back to that business section and go to a session, this again, all of the session management will be done via the Zoho apps. So your sessions here are really like setting up those settings. And then the sessions in practicality are going to be started and ended via those mobile applications. Last one down here at the bottom are just your purchases, right? This is identical to Zoho Books and Inventory, right? Because none of your purchasing operations are really going to happen in the store, right? Like that's just not really how that works. So those very similar, you're going to get visibility into them if you need to, but not going to be something that you touch too often in POS. Realistically, you're going to be doing that in Books and Inventory. Under the sales channels, this is kind of where you can set up the various different ways that you can sell product out of this application. I'll highlight kind of two different places where some of these things live. So one of them is going to be under sales channels and then under registers. A register is basically like the specific application or the specific like iPad, essentially, that you're going to be running this application on, right? So you're going to have many different registers. They might be at different stores or locations. Those are one way to do it. Under the customization settings, we've got the option to, again, enable and disable sessions, manage any of our standard sales, customers, and general data settings there. Under the settings here in the bottom left are where we have a couple things that are unique to Zoho POS. Business profile users, those are very similar. Payment providers, you know, we've got a bunch of different terminal devices that you can use right now every everywhere. That's clever. And then they're going to add more over time. 
Locations are pretty important. So if you do have many different locations that you have in that you're selling through, you are going to want to enable this branch option. So if I do just enable that, basically you can come in and set up like, hey, I have this register and this register is at a location, right? So we're actually able to know that, hey, within this place, we have this sequence of people and, you know, the general management of this location can be different. You will notice these break into a business location. So essentially, like we have items stored here and we bill out of this location. You can also have it just as a storage location, kind of like a warehouse, right? As we move down this list, you've got all your normal preferences. Again, most of these preferences, taxes, templates are going to look just like what you have inside of Zoho Books. Same thing with the email setup, going to be very similar. I will highlight here the shipping integration, probably going to be more or less important in a normal retail environment. I'm just going to hand you the product, right? But the, a lot of these integrations, if you do have them, like you could be doing e-commerce and running through POS, maybe it's a big item and the customer says, you know what, I'll pay for it now, but you can just ship it to my house. You can connect all of these just like you have them in books and inventory. One thing that is really cool with POS is you have the full suite of Zoho workflow automation, right? So like back again in my day, when I was using a Stripe register for a lot of this, there wasn't like, you know, an order gets placed and I trigger a script to go do a bunch of work for me, right? Like that just was not a thing. And it really isn't a thing in a lot of POS tools. So really excited to be able to use proper workflow automation, custom code, all that good stuff here, just directly within POS, just like you can in Zoho Books. Same thing with webhook management, third-party connections, and API usage, right? So you're going to have all those same kind of like enterprise data management tools just natively set up within POS. It's going to be up to you. The reality is like when an order gets placed in POS, it's going to create a sales order in books. So if it were me, I'm probably still going to run a lot of my automation inside of books, right? Unless there's some reason where you need to spread it out for like API call usage or something specific. But I like to have my automations housed as centrally as possible. So for me, a lot of that I'm probably still going to do in books and inventory. Nonetheless, nice to have it in here. Last but not least, we do have a full suite of reports. Books and inventory users are going to see, hey, this looks pretty similar to what I have in the other side of the house. And it is. These are very similar reports. Now, what I would expect over time, Right now, we don't really see them, but what, what I would expect over time is more reports unique to things like stores and sessions, right? So those are really like the two big things that exist inside of Zoho POS that might not exist in some of those other tools, right? It's like, give me a report of the last 10 sessions and a summation of the cash flow generated, right? That type of thing I would expect is going to come before too long for the default reports here inside of Zoho POS. So with that, I'm really interested to hear some feedback from everybody if you started to use this application. I'm also really interested to hear, can you access it? Because I've just, I stumbled upon this as we were going through the news for our podcast, The Serum Zen Show. I actually found it because they have an October updates article that they wrote up for the Western market about all the updates they made to Zoho POS. And I'm like, you released Zoho POS. Uh, so I went and tried and I got in. So I recorded this video. With that, definitely leave me down uh, below a comment down below with any thoughts, feedback, questions on the application. If there's anything you want me to cover in more detail, I'm happy to do that. So just let me know. And again, genuine request, try to access this and <laughs> let me know if you can. I'm really curious. And while you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe. That really does help us out. Totally free for you. And it helps the YouTube algorithm know that we're making content that people are liking. And last but not least, just head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help out with your Zoho installation. With that, we'll wrap up for today. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.